Meta is currently circling the entire planet with the largest internet cable ever, a single choke point at a time when Russia can't stop sabotaging undersea cables. But is it true that giant robots are protecting our internet? Yeah, sometimes. The backbone of the internet is fiber optic cables. The way that old data gets from one continent to another is fiber optic cables run along the bottom of the ocean. There are more than a million kilometers of fiber optic cables carrying our data from one place to another. So even using a satellite you're almost definitely using fiber optics. How deep are we talking? Some of them are pretty shallow, but they run deep. I mean, they're going all the way across the ocean, so they go down trenches and stuff. Some of these cables are miles down. So the actual fiber optics are these little thin threads of glass. They wrap it in armored sheaths, trying to protect it from being pulled on, being crushed, going down the valley, being bitten by sharks, because that happens. So now they're shark proof. Are there any concerns with having cables this fragile being the backbone of the internet all the way at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, there sure are. Of course, there's the natural stuff, avalanches and things like that. Earthquakes too, I'll bet. Yeah, not so long ago, there was an undersea one. There was an avalanche off the coast of Africa that ended up taking out a bunch of cables at the same time. But more and more, there are hints of sabotage, especially around Northern Europe. There have been a number of incidents lately with your know, Chinese and Russian ships sailing by and then suddenly fiber optic cables being cut. If a ship accidentally leaves down its anchor and starts sailing, one of those would just rip through a fiber optic cable by accident. Certainly some of them have been accidents, but some of them seem very suspicious. So for example, Egypt is a major choke point for these cables. According to Wired, back in June 2022, a cable got cut in Egypt and it was a disaster. Egypt is one of the centers, right? Because it's what connects the Mediterranean to the Red Sea. And of course the Red Sea connects the Indian Ocean. Ocean. So unless you want to go all the way around Africa, you go through Egypt. And in June, the cable got cut which means seven countries in Africa lost their internet. 90% of Ethiopia had no internet at all. When you say no internet at all, this is not just no broadband. This is no cellular, nothing. Well, right. I mean, they're, the cell phones, you know, they could connect to the tower, but the tower couldn't make it to any website in Europe or any website in Asia, which is pretty much every website. They were really, really cut off. There are, in fact, 16 major fiber optic cables going from the Mediterranean through Egypt into the Red Sea. So there's all these different cables. So if anyone goes out, you're okay. But just one spot there in the Suez Canal where it's dangerous. Those 16 cables get cut. World's practically cut into two internets, basically. So if these cables get damaged, how do they fix them? There are companies like ASN, Global Marine, Telxius, and these guys run big ships that go around. And when a cable gets cut, they use lasers. So you, you can bounce a laser down the fiber. And if it's broken, a little bit of it will reflect back by timing the speed of light over glass. They know how far down the cable it was cut. They have the maps, they can go there. If it's in shallow enough water, they'll send divers down, but usually it's not shallow enough water. So they'll send these big, robots down to go pick up the cable and bring it all the way back to the surface where they can cut it, clean it, splice on another end. Then they go get the other end, fish that to the surface, you know, tie a buoy to it so it doesn't sink. Once it's all right, let go, let it sink back down to the bottom. And so these cables get cut and in a matter of days, they can find it and fix it. That sounds really cool. But like with all these ways that these cables can fail, catastrophically. Do you see something like satellites replacing the need for it in the future? I do not. The fiber optic cable, they have mm. almost no loss. The other thing about it is each of those threads has as much bandwidth as you could get in the best case shooting up to a satellite. So if you need more bandwidth, you just toss in one more thread and you've doubled it. And in fact, they're not tossing one more and they, they toss in 50 more than they need. So they have so much bandwidth. It would be absolutely impossible to replicate that trying to bounce off satellites in space. Cable this big can have so many actual fibers in it. You simply can't imagine the amount of bandwidth they can fit down one of these cables. It sounds like the solution is redundancy, basically. Yeah, the answer is have so many cables that cutting a couple doesn't do anything, so it stops being worth it to cut a couple. And the problem just naturally goes away. But in these scenarios where a country like Ethiopia loses 90% of their internet for a while, could something like Starlink still be able to help while there is no... Yeah, no... so normally what Starlink does 
is you use the dish, it bounces up to a satellite, comes back down to a nearby base station, somewhere within like 100, 200 miles of you, that puts it on the internet. And that's not going to help you at all in this scenario, because mm -hmm. the base station's off the internet too. But Starlink fairly recently has added their space lasers. So you go up to the satellite, and it can actually laser to the next satellite that lasers to the next satellite that comes down in a country that does have internet still. So they can keep you on. Now, of course, doing this reduces the bandwidth, you get a slower connection, the latency is much worse. But they added this to get to ship. They wanted to get internet to ships in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and there's no base station near there. It's pretty far between islands. So they laser over to another satellite. If you're doing that, you probably want to start laying down some rules of cutting off Netflix, cutting off YouTube. Don't let people do video calls, but then they can still text and email, and it's slower, but you'd be on the internet. So it's a solid backup option. Backup option is right. So, you know, best defense is massive redundancy. So hypothetically, could you use Speedify to bond multiple of these cables together? These threads, they're well into the terabits speeds. They're already so fast, you can't max them out with your computer. But you need backups. What if the fiber gets clipped? You want to be able to instantly route around to your Starlink, to your tethered cell phone, to your whatever other connections you have, so that if you lose the fiber, you're still online during your important live streams and video calls and things like that. That's where it makes sense to use Speedify with fiber. But these actual fiber trunks coming across the ocean, they are so fast. Your computer can't keep up with it, with or without Speedify. <laughs> if you like this video, subscribe to our channel for more tech discussions like this one.